In this optimization question, we have to determine the minimum cost to build a box given the following constraints. Let's start by drawing a diagram to visualize the situation. So here's our box. And this box will have a length, a width, and a height. Now our goal is to minimize cost, so we'll need to build a cost function. So let's look at the information given to see which one relates to cost. And number three says that the material to build the top and the bottom costs 50 cents per square centimeter, while the material to build the sides of the box costs 40 cents per square centimeter. So cost is related to area of the box. And in our case, that would be surface area of the box. So let's start by building that function. Let's say surface area here will be the area of the top of the box plus the area of the bottom of the box. And to visualize from our diagram, that would be here's the top of the box and here is the bottom of the box. Plus the area of the front of the box plus the back of the box plus the left side of the box plus the right side of the box. And the total surface area is the addition of the six sides of the box. Again, top, bottom, front, back, left side, right side. Now let's put in some variables. So the top of the box here would be this dimension area would be length times width. So we could put that in as length times width. And the bottom of the box would be the same. So we've got a length here and a width. So that would be plus length times width. The front of the box would be length times the height here. And the back of the box would be the same, length times the height. And the left side of the box would be the width times the height, and the right side would be the width times the height. Okay, we'll collect some like terms here. So that would be two length times widths plus two length times height plus two width times height. So we have a surface area function. So now let's make our cost function. So cost would be we have the top and the bottom costing 50 cents per square centimeter. So that would be 50 cents, or 0.5, times the top and bottom, which is given by 2 times length times width. Now the sides are given by the front, back, left, and right sides, which is the 2 length times height plus 2 width times height, and the cost for that area is 40 cents per square centimeter. So for the front and back would be 40.04 times length time, or sorry, times 2 times length times height, plus 40 cents times 2 times width times height. So let's clean that up a little bit. I'll move this up, and we'll get our cost function here. 0.5 times 2 is 1, so that would just be length times width. 0.4 times 2 is 0.8, or 0 0.8 times length times height. Again, 0 0.8 times width times height. So we have our cost function, but we notice that we've got three variables, length, width, and height, and we have to find a way to relate those. Well, let's come back up to our information, our constraints. The first one says that length must be 1.5 times width. So what we can do here is say that length is equal to 1.5 times the width. And we're given that number two, it, the volume must be 150 cubic centimeters. Well, volume would be length times width times height of this box. Now we know that the volume must be 150 cubic centimeters, so we can put that in for V. 150 equals length times width times height. And we know that the length is 1.5 times the width, so we can put that in for length here. And we would get 150 equals 1.5 W times W times H which would be 150 equals 1.5 w squared 
times h. Now the easiest thing to do here is to isolate the h. So what we can say, and we move it up here, is that 150 divided by 1.5 w squared would be equal to h. We're just dividing both sides by 1.5 w squared. And cleaning this up, that would be 100 over w squared equals h. So now we have height in terms of width and length in terms of width. So we can substitute that in for length into our cost function for length and height. And if we did that, we would get 1.5 w times w plus 0 0.8 1.5 w and height would be 100 over w squared plus 0 0.8 times w times 100 over w squared. Okay, let's move that up a little bit so we have some more workspace. So if we continue here, 1.5 w times w would be 1.5 w squared plus 0.8 times 1.5 times 100 is 120 and the W's here, that W would cancel with one of those and leave me with one W on the bottom. Plus 0.8 times 100 would be 80. And then again, a W with a W on the bottom would leave you with a W on the bottom here. Cleaning up our like terms, we would get 1.5 W squared plus 200 over W and that would be our cost function. Now we want to minimize this function. In other words, we want to find out where c prime is going to equal 0. OK, time to do some calculus. Let's get some more workspace here. First, let's rewrite this function, make it a little bit easier. We'll write this as c equals 1.5 w squared plus 200 times w to the minus 1. And then using sum and power rules, we can get c prime equal to 3w minus 200w to the minus 2. To find the critical points, we set this function equal to 0, this derivative function. So 0 equals 3w minus 200w to the minus 2. I'll write that now as 0 equals 3w minus 200 over w squared. Bring over the 200 over w squared equals 3w. Cross multiply. 200 equals 3w cubed. We'll bring that up here. So we'll isolate the w. So 200 divided by 3 equals w cubed. Take the cube root, so that'll be the cube root of 200 over 3 will equal w. Which, when we plug into our calculator, w equals four, approximately 4.055. Now we have to determine if this value is indeed a minimum. So to do that, let's do the second derivative test. So we'll take our first derivative function, derive it again to get the second derivative. Again, using the sum and power rules, c double primed would be 3 plus 400 w to the minus 3. This can be written as 3 plus 400 over w cubed. Now our dimensions, width, length, and height, have to be greater than 0. So therefore, c double primed here will always be greater than 0. If we plug any positive value for w in here, this will always be a positive plus 3 gives us a positive throughout. So if c double primed is greater than 0, then the graph in our interval or our domain will always be concave up, which means that there's going to be a minimum. Let's confirm that by looking at the graph of our cost function here. 
This is our graph of the cost function versus width. And we can notice that in the domain where w is greater than 0, we have a single minimum. The graph is concave up, and the tangent line, slope of the tangent line at the bottom here would give us the minimum, and that minimum value is 4.055. Now that we've confirmed we have a minimum, let's go and figure out the minimum cost. So let's come up to the top here. We have a width of 4.055 centimeters, and our cost function is c equals 1.5 width squared plus 200 divided by w. Substituting in, we get 1.5 times 4.055 squared plus 200 divided by 4.055. And when we multiply that out, we get 24.665 plus 49.322. And if we add those together, we'll end up with 73 decimal 986, which we can round off to be oh, about $73.99, $73.99. And if we go down to our graph again, we can see that our cost indeed would be extrapolated over to the c-axis, 73.986, or about $73.99. And there you go. We could also go ahead and work out our uh, length and width based on the formulas before if we needed to. But they asked us for the minimum cost, and so our minimum cost is $73.99, given the constraints in the question.